question, uh, well, this question here that I talk about is, uh, when you're managing your risks, um, rate the statements that you either agree or disagree with or strongly disagree. So the longer the line means the more people strongly disagree with that. Uh, what I found interesting there is a lot of practitioners feel as though they don't get enough external peer review. So they do the work. And even actually, if you look at the, um, the internal peer review as well, they get, they don't feel comfortable with that. I thought that was quite interesting. They'd like to get more external input outside of just their circle and the company. Um, this one here, the question is, when looking for external input to your work, uh, indicate how often you refer to the guidance of these different organisations. And uh, between us, we picked out 10 organisations that often came up in conversation. That uh, IAOA is in there. Um, understandably, so that, again, the longer the, the column means, the less they refer to it. Un understandably, um, in-house local regulation, you'd expect that to be what they refer to the most. Um, after that, it's, it's um, IFC and ISO, so the ISO standards. Many companies would be signed up to ISO 40001, for example. Um, and then you have the industry specifics. So SPE is a society of petroleum engineers, and they have you know, a lot of documentation and uh, reports on, on impact assessment. Um, IPECA is, uh, is a kind of sister company to OGP, but more specific on the environment. Uh, and then you have ILA and, and UNEP. And then finally, this question here in terms of where emphasis or where more guidance would be needed. Again, the longer the column, the less they felt that they wanted more guidance. Um, and I just <coughs> thought this was interesting because often contractor management comes up. You know, we we badly scoped what was needed. You know, the budget for uh, understanding environment and social risks totally exceeded what we we initially estimated. And so we want better guidance in setting a more specific scope that's more specifically tailored to the decision making that needs to be made uh, and, and also understanding the risks. Um, so that's the user feedback. I'm going to talk now about what we want to do with this uh, eShrim um, for the next couple of years, which is the commitment of the task force. Um, I'll just put a graphic there, it's a graphic from ISO on risk management, but it was really clear that just a stronger focus on those decision points that need to be made and the information required for those decisions and also risk assessment. Um, so a big focus on that, how can we reformat this so that it really does focus on that more effectively. Um, use of external guidance, I know that you know, IFC have, have uh, recently redone their safeguard policies, um, but making, how can you show you know, relevance, if you like, within IFC to to make it consistent here, so you can take text from that and map it to project phases, for example. Um, and then the web enabling, so something that came up a lot in the discussions that we've had recently, um, how can we create a tool, when we get back to that big matrix, for a lot of people it's quite daunting, and they didn't really understand that they needed to have uh, you know, only a, a focus in a specific area. There's a lot of areas that you could just justify not doing because it's not relevant to you. So can we somehow make it more user uh, friendly by having these, these filters? Um, and I think I'll probably put some slides together as to how a web version could work. And the task force has agreed that they will do this over the next two years uh, and develop this. And this will, you know, a front page could look like this. Um, in terms of the fields, this isn't what it could look like, but how it could function by essentially you can highlight um, initially, you know, what's the project in terms of the uh, what is the project itself? Uh, is it an exploration activity? Uh, although this is OGP, so it's upstream mainly, but it could eventually grow to downstream projects. So is it a decommissioning activity? Is it a, a seismic survey, for example? And then what phase in the project are? Um, then what is the, the scope that you're looking at? So you're looking to understand you work predominantly in social risks for the project or the community health or the environmental risks and you can highlight or, or deselect you know, whatever ones you choose. Um, and then the, yeah, the, the scope as well. So I've got the social and then you've got the, the stakeholder plans, the management plans, etc. And then finally, um, what authority content Whose content authority do you want to see uh, when, when you're working through this? So, obviously, there's the in house, there's OGP. Um, it may be that if, if we can get an 
kind of pinpointing on it, we can get in certain jurisdictions, you know, what the regulatory requirements are. Um, and the IFC, for example. Uh, and then the final step is, you know, to what level of detail do you want to go from very high level deliverable all the way down to um, a kind of um, interactive forum for practitioners to exchange ideas and you can do that. Um, and then essentially you can have your own tailor-made uh, process that you follow. Um, so that's the, the idea of what we're going to work towards. Um, and then finally, uh, the help that we need to achieve that. Um, so, so I've been asked to, uh, presenting here, I've been asked to scope out how possible it is, how much it's going to cost, etc. Um, the first thing that we'd obviously do is, okay, does something similar exist? Um, within the oil and gas industry, certainly within the 49 people that we surveyed in, in relative detail and conversation that I've had, there isn't something which is focused on this process. A lot of it is, is a static document, it's about guidance, but it's not about you know, certain taking you through a process that every, every practitioner normally would have to do. Um, so if something else does exist, you know, can we use it, can we adapt it? Uh, and, and this is a kind of a, a question you know, for all of you out here, I, I've got my details at the bottom there. Um, the, uh, the IFC safeguard policies, uh, you know, I'm particularly interested to talk to, to, to those from IFC Asia, but we have an input into that. But again, it came up quite a lot when we, if we're doing a project, increasingly joint ventures, um, it does have IFC funding, and we don't want to have to be looking at what the internal requirements are, the IFC requirements are, you know, what OGP guidance is. We want them all to come together somehow. Um, so somebody would need to, to think about you know, how how we can do that. Um, I don't. I'm not a big you know, rule follower. Um, so we need to find again the balance between you know, this is the process, what we're suggesting is the process, but we still want you to obviously use your, your intuition, um, use your creativity you know, to, to add to this. Um, but we do need the consistency, we need the record keeping. Um, and finally, the, the kind of hesitation about anything being online, generally people are still nervous about that. Um, so you have to be, you know, sometimes use iTunes and you get the kind of it's offline, download it and then it kind of does all two updates, etc. So sh should that be the way that it goes? And then companies can, if they want, tailor make it a bit more to their specific needs, but it's still consistent across the industry. Good, and that's it. That's, that's my presentation. So thank you so much. Great, Ben, thank you very much. That was really, really interesting. Any questions? One or two, maybe? Thank you. 
said, I can see how one could use this to replace the more traditional guidance documents, which, as you say, are very static and not, not as easy to update. Thank you very much, Commander.